so we'll go ahead and, and get started here. Um, we got a lot of stuff to cover tonight, and um, hopefully we get, we should have plenty of time to get through it all. Um, so welcome everyone to our last class of the, um, the wheelchair skills classes. Um, I think that, uh, you know, for the first time actually having to do these online like we are here, we have actually been, they've been pretty successful here. I think this has been a pretty, we certainly consistently had the same number of people on the, on the call here every time, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. And we have um, actually been able to share quite a bit of information that I thought was going to be somewhat challenging. So, um, so it's not, it's, it actually has turned out better than I thought it was going to turn out. Thank you to all the instructors too. You guys rock. Yeah. Very Thank much you. So. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. So what I want to start, what we'll start out with here is I know that we know all, you know, we all know who we are, but we still want to, I still want to have everyone again introduce to each other as, as, so we know who's, you know, is on the call here. Um, so uh, my name is Brian Mazoyer. I, uh, I kind of facilitate the, uh, the, the classes here. I'm a, I'm a physical therapist assistant. Um, and I'm the one of the manufacturers reps here in Arizona. Um, so Dominic is next to me. Go ahead. You're right uh, there, Dominic. Uh, and <laughs> for once, I'll actually say that I'm one of the instructors. I believe. There you go. <laughs> uh, 25 years uh, post injury, uh, car accident back in Michigan when I was a kid, uh, just after my 16th birthday. Been. Uh, running amok and doing crazy wheelchair stuff ever since. All right, well, welcome to Running Amok. Uh, let's see, Ralph, you're on the other side of me here, so go ahead, Ralph. Okay, my name's Ralph Sweden. Uh, I got muscular dystrophy and also have full body radiation and injured my spine. All right, welcome back again. And since uh, on my computer, Karen's right next to you, let's go to Karen. Oh, seeing Ralph's way over at the far side on mine. I'm Karen. Oh, yeah. Thanks for coming again. <laughs> I'm a T12 incomplete from a hit and run motorcycle accident in November of 02. Well, thanks, Karen. Um, Eric? Absolutely. Oh, I don't need the egg, but I want to. Oh, um, my name is Eric Kenning. I work for the Arizona Spinal Cord Injury Association. Um, my injury is a T11, T12 injury, um, partial paralysis, and it was a birth injury, so I've had it for uh, over 50 years. So that's telling us that you're over 50 then, right, Eric? Nope. Just say you're old. He is old. Uh, <laughs> speaking of, of old, where's Gary? Gary? I can barely just see the top of your head here, dude. You see the shiny top of his head? It looks like an egg. I, I think I see an egg. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Gary. Oh, uh, I'm Gary Van John, <clears throat> 42 years in a wheelchair, T12 paraplegic, auto accident. I'm not in therapy. One of the instructors and founders. Uh, that's enough. Okay. Uh, Joel? Hey, everyone. My name is Joel. Um, I'm a physical therapist assistant at the Cobalt Rehab Hospital in Surprise. And then I think I see Michelle in the red shirt. Is that right? Uh, I don't know. No. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm here. Oh, there she is. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, the one in the red shirt looks similar to me. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess it's so dark. I, I got to get closer to my screen now. Okay. I maybe okay. maybe I can Go turn ahead, the light on. Um, my name is Michelle. I've been injured since 2006, 13 years. I'm uh, L2. Quarter aquana incomplete. I still go to PT and uh, exercise every day. Okay, uh, Amber. I'm um, PTA at Empire Physical Therapy. Um, I'm just wanting to learn a little more, and my daughter wants to say hi too. Hi. Hi, <laughs> hi Amber. <laughs> hi, Amber. And then, uh, Valerie. Um, Valerie. And I am just hit the two-year mark, T12, uh, paraplegic, had a spinal stroke after surgery, um, 
and I do stretching every day and would like, I'm very interested in learning different ones. So I have a variety and can challenge myself. And I'm okay. in two sides. Terrific. And uh, Christine. Oh, there we go. I'm Christine Beecham. I'm an occupational Christine, therapist. You're muted. No, she's not. She's not muted anymore. <laughs> she's a big girl. She can unmute herself. I did it. Um, I'm an occupational therapist at Banner Physical Therapy in uh, downtown Phoenix. I do outpatient neuro OT and the wheelchair seating clinic here. Um, and I'm one of the instructors. And right next to her is Sarah. Yeah, um, my name is Sarah. Um, I'm an incomplete uh, T4, and I've been um, hurt for two years now. All right, welcome back, Sorry. Sarah. And Jean? <laughs> and Jean? Jean? Oh, I'm, um, there you go. Spin uh, C5 quadriplegic, uh, spinal cord injury board member. Been injured for 26 years, and uh, always enjoy these clinics and seem to learn something new. So thank you. All right. I, I, I don't, I know Ashley's got hers muted, but I don't know if she's actually there or just is, if she's listening or if she wants to say hi or anything. So I'm thinking not. Okay. So um, the class this evening is mechanics of your wheelchair. Um, so what we're going to, we're going to be um, talking about maintenance and cleaning and setup of chairs um, things to do about um, for repairs. Um, I know that uh, someone uh, posted apparently a pretty cool video on doing tire repair. So we will um, we'll watch what uh, what she does um, uh, for, um, for for doing a tire repair. Um, and then hopefully we've got uh, some of the guys have got some of their toys with them nearby that they can show us some maybe some sports chairs. Some, some other types of, of um, chairs for getting out and about in them. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Oh. And don't forget I made the video for my toys too. And toy, good. I'm glad that you made video there as well. Um, so what we're going to start out with is, is, is um, chair maintenance. And, um, you know, just like your car, you know, it's something that you should be doing to your chairs and kind of know at least once a month giving it a once over just to make sure that things are are working okay on it um so uh, i think that dominic is actually set up are you ready for 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 caster cleaning yeah yeah i can show okay so go ahead i'm gonna let you start with caster cleaning because i i think that that's one of the things that people neglect the most and it can influence so much in how you are um, rolling your chair and how your chair is moving and how well your chair can be moving and also help prevent problems um, with bearings. So we're going to talk about that a little bit too, Dominic. So take yeah. it away. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like Brian was saying, you know, the, the casters are probably one of the most vulnerable parts and, and uh, of your chair and also something that will affect its, its performance dramatically if they're in bad shape. Um, and so you want to do, I tend to, to do maintenance probably, eh, I take a look every couple weeks, but about once a month, I really dig into it. Um, and, uh, I actually, I save this one a little bit for you guys a little bit longer. So, um, they're not as bad as they, they can get. Um, but you really want to be careful. Um, one of the biggest things that happens is, is you'll, you'll accumulate hair in the bearings. And what happens with that is it's a place where moisture can, can gather. And when you get moisture in your bearings, it pushes out the grease and it makes them rust. And so they'll actually tend to, to slow down, if not seize altogether. Um, so you wanna make sure that you keep that hair out of there. Um, and, and if there's like a mud buildup or whatever, you know, you wanna keep your wheels clean and, and rolling well. Um, so for mine, um, I have, like I, I showed you guys earlier, I have the frog legs uh, suspension in, in these, in the forks. Um, it's the whole frog leg setup, the wheels, everything is, is all that. Um, and for me, 
all it takes is two five thirty seconds Allen wrenches. Um, some people it's a Phillips head. Some people it's actually a hex bolt head. Um, depends on what you need. Um, mine is exactly the same on both sides. So what I'll do is I just put one in each side and then you loosen the axle itself. And what's inside, if you haven't already seen it, is there'll be a screw that goes into like an axle. And so one side, you'll see the screw that comes out. And then the other side is, is the axle piece. So see, this one has like a long tube and then this one is just your axle or your, excuse me, your, your screw. And then all I do is, is just lift this out and what I've got on here is what's called a frog shield, they call it. And what this does is it actually prevents hair or helps prevent hair from building up in, in, your, um, in your, your bearing. Um, you can see here's, here's the wad of cat hair and people hair and everything else. Um, and so what I'll do is I usually just take these all apart. And sometimes you'll see in this bearing here, you'll see some hair that'll kind of get embedded. So you want to pull that out and, and make sure that's not stuck in the bearing itself and just wipe them down. I'll do the same thing with, with the frog shield itself. Um, and they're on, on both sides. So you get all the hair out and old t-shirts are my friend. Just simple, simple things for, for maintenance. Um, and I'll go through and I, I wipe down the insides of the forks here. There's usually a little bit of dirt buildup or grease or whatnot. So you just wipe those down. The other thing I'll use too in, in some of the areas is an old toothbrush. Um, and then I have a simple green degreaser. Um, Windex works okay. A lot of different like Dawn dish soap if you want to mix it up, things like that. They all work really well. Um, the toothbrush works really good to get in all the little nooks and crannies. Um, and uh, the other thing too, if you need it, this is one of them that's a really good tool. I get mine at like Harbor Freight. They're like $4, I think, for a pack or $2 for a pack. These little pick tools, they're again, you know, really good to get into really tight areas and things like that. So... And one of the things you want to do too is I'll take my fingers and I put them on either side of the bearings and I'll just spin the wheel and just kind of feel how it moves. If it moves really, really freely, you know, then you're in good shape. Sometimes you'll feel like it'll, it'll catch. You can feel it kind of like bind in your hands. If it binds all together, then you definitely need to replace them. Um, you can replace the bearings themselves. These are just uh, like roller skate bearings or, or skateboard bearings. So any um, sporting goods store will have them um, and there's no real specific size or anything like that. Um, so then you just take the, I take these frog shields and I put those back on and then you just gotta kind of slide them in there. And then now what I'll do too is in order to thread this axle through, there's another little like bushing inside the wheel. So you want to try to line everything up as best you can. But you'll find that when you get into the very middle of the wheel, you can't go any farther usually because that little bearing inside, uh, that little bushing will slide and you can't slide the, the axle all the way through. So what I'll do is I'll take like this with the Allen wrench, I'll go in here and I'll just kind of move things around and just kind of find where that's gonna slide all the way through. And then you just line up the other side. And then put your screw back in. And then when you tighten them down, mine, I can pretty much tighten all the way down and it still spins. But what you'll want to do is you want to check and see once you've tightened it down, 
make sure that it still rolls really, really freely, um, but everything's still nice and tight. Um, some people will actually put like a thread lock on these so that this screw doesn't back out. Um, but it makes it a little bit harder when you go, when you do go to maintenance them, um, because it's locked in, it's bonded. It's basically a big glue. Um, so that's pretty much just changing the front casters. The other one you want to check too is, is how it spins in the housing itself. Um, and the trick I was taught was that you want it to free spin, but you don't want it to just like be sloppy and just keep spinning. You kind of keep a little bit of tension on it. And what that does is that keeps the front casters from fluttering, like when you're going you know, quickly down a sidewalk and the fronts, you know, they'll start to shake. Um, if you keep a little bit of tension on these, this, this in here, then that prevents that. Um, on my chair, there's a cap right here and I can just take a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, and I can pop this cap off and there's a nut inside here. And what you want to do is that's how you can take this whole assembly out or you can adjust the tension on it. Um, it's pretty typical for a lot of wheelchairs. They do it that way. Um, there's some, I want to say quickie got real creative with the way they did things. <laughs> Um, so there's some variations on that, but that's, this is the, the pretty much the, the common. Um, and then what I'll do, um, once I've done that, that's usually my first thing. That's, that's the most important. Um, then I go through and I check the tire pressure on my rear tires. Um, if you have solid rubber tires, then obviously you don't need to worry about that. Um, and then I just go over, I have, um, I have what's called D's locks. Um, I don't know if you guys hey, can. Hey, can yes, I interrupt for just a moment? Uh huh. So one uh, a, a a hint for everybody, or, or something to, to make sure you do when you're doing the casters is is do the caster wheels one at a time. That way you have yes. the other caster wheel to look at when you're putting it back together. Because a lot of times on the the fork of the caster, you may have multiple holes that 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 axle can go through. And if you take Good them point. both off at the same time and forget which hole it goes into, you can, you can change the, the rolling geometry of your chair. Um, so I always re I recommend people take them off one at a time, do one side, that way you can kind of look at the other side to see how it's supposed to go. So if you forget something, or if you have an extra part, well, you shouldn't have extra parts. So, uh, so you need, you'll have to go back and figure out where it went but you've got the other side to refer back to. So I always do that so that I've got that to be able to refer back to. Yep, okay, so absolutely. Let's talk about these locks, because I know that there are some have them. I think they're kind of a cool thing to talk about because they're unusual. So with these locks, I hope you guys can see that my computer kind of goes into this weird shadow, but on, on the left side of my chair, I just have this one lever right here underneath where my knee's at. And this one lever, it runs a cable and it splits and goes to both wheels. So wow. when you look at, if you can see on the hub of my wheel, see this, the gray ring right here that's got a bunch of holes in it. So there's a pin, a spring loaded pin on the inside of my frame. And what happens is when I pull this lever, both wheels get locked. That pin goes into both wheels simultaneously and it locks right at the hub. This is definitely not a try to slow down lock. This is a on <laughs> Because if you're trying to go to, if you're going too fast and you hit <laughs> brakes, they will stop you and inertia makes body keep going, wheelchair stop. One yeah. of the things that, that I do in the maintenance of these, is there's a nut right here that the, the lever pivots on. And what happens is it's a locking nut, but sometimes it will work its way out over time. And what has happened is I've been rolling down the street and I've hit a bump in the sidewalk and it's been enough to jar the wheelchair and jar this loose. Well, to jar this to engage the brakes <laughs> and stop me dead in my tracks. Well, my chair dead in, my, in its tracks. Um, so I want to make, you know, you make sure that this is nice and tight. Um, and there's a lot of little screws that hold this brake hub 
onto the wheel. So you want to make sure and, and go through those and make sure those are nice and snug. Um, don't like crank them down because you'll just strip them. Um, but I'm wondering. Hey, Dominic. Yes. Hey, that thread that that is on there, that bolt, that looks like a nylon threaded bolt. It is. It's a. It's what they call a nylock bolt or a locking or a locking nut. Um, yeah. A nylock so, nut. So, so that would tend to come off a lot less easily it does yeah it's it's meant not to come off but with constant usage and, and moving that pivot all the time um, yeah. they do come loose every once in a while the chair that I'm actually in I need to actually put up on the bench next and tighten that one because it keeps coming loose um, it's been I don't know a few months um, oh the other thing that I was gonna show too was um, I know Sarah did the video on um, on uh, changing your tire, but I wanted to give you guys a couple of tips. These are tire sticks. You can get these at any bicycle shop. This is particularly the Pedro's brand, and I swear by these. I have broken pretty much every other brand except for these. I've broken these, but I was doing some really stupid stuff, so don't worry about that. Um, but these, getting a pair of these to get your tires off are absolutely key. The other thing that's really, really good to have um, is these little glueless patches. Again, you can get them at any bike shop. I think you can even get them at like Walmart and Target and stuff like that. Um, but if you do have a flat and you need to, and you say you don't have a spare tube or whatnot, you can actually, when you find the hole, you can put this right over the hole and you don't have to deal with messy glues or anything like that. It's just stick on, put it back. You put your wheel back together, pump it back up. It's good to go. These so where do you get those? So these you get at basically any bike shop. Um, like I said, I think you can maybe even get them at like Walmart and stuff like that. I think like there's slime brand, different brands. These are specialized. Um, I am on Amazon too. <laughs> Definitely on Amazon. Both All of this stuff you can get on Amazon. Um, and what I do is I have um, with my, the cushion that I have is a Supercore cushion and I have a little bag on the front and I actually keep these in the bag of my chair just in case. Um, you know, do you I'm keep not, a, a tire pump? I don't. You can... Um, you can use like you can get these little co2 cartridges at the bike shops okay. um, and they have a little filler that goes right on your your tube valve your schrader valve and that's probably the most compact and and easiest to carry around um those little co2 shots they're good enough to get your tire back up to pressure and and get you back rolling again um i tend to have uh, either a compressor or a, a like a bike pump wherever i'm at um, so I, I don't, I don't tend to bring one with me, but those are good to have. Um, you can get really small ones too, that are really, uh, these small, um, compact pumps, but they take like a million pumps to pump the tires up to pressure. So you, you're sitting there for like an hour to pump your tire up. But it's a great, it's a great arm exercise. It, it is. It is. Yeah, definitely. You, get, you get your aerobic going. You get your aerobic <laughs> going on for the day. Um, um, and, and so, and Dominic certainly brings up a good point about tires is, you know, maintaining the, the tire pressure is, is really important for, for two weeks, for two reasons. One, uh, a low, a low tire, a low tire pressure is harder to roll than a, than a tire that's at its normal pressure. So you're actually adding to your rolling resistance. Um, another reason is that a uh, uh, I guess there's several reasons. Another reason is that uh, a, a properly inflated tire is less likely to have punctures to it than an underinflated tire because with an underinflated tire, um, just like on your car, you can actually pinch it against the rim and you can you can get a you can get a hole in it in a, in a tube that way as well. And and then certainly if you're using a, a standard uh, wheel lock on the chair like I've got on this one. This just has a scissor lock on it. If the if the tire is not properly inflated, the 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 wheel the wheel is not going to engage, or the, the wheel lock is not going to engage well against the wheel, 
And so your chair may move when you're transferring either into it or out of it. Um, so, uh, so it certainly is, is, is an important thing to, to, to do. And, and with most maintenance, it's not like you have to spend hours doing stuff to your chair. I mean, you know, cleaning out casters literally takes five or 10 minutes. And that's probably the biggest thing. If you, if you did nothing else to your chair uh, once a month, that is the one thing I would say. Do that if you do nothing else. I, I usually and, carry a spare dinner or two because um, where I live in downtown Phoenix, we get, there's broken glass on the sidewalk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all over the place. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and it certainly is, it, 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 it's just, you know, just like if you're out riding a bicycle or, or, you know, it's part of, I think, just part of life. If you've chosen to have air tubes and air tires on your chair, it's just going to be something you're going to have to always deal with it and be, be prepared for it. So, so like Donna, I, I, I didn't, uh, hadn't known about those little patches. I, now I know about those little patches. What do you guys think about um, slime in tires? Does that does that seem to help? Is it a help or a hindrance? It you know, does. I, I really suggest it to people, but I, you know, I, I don't know what you guys do. What do you guys do? Um, it it has helped me in um, in like my mountain bike. I use tire sealant because I use what's called a tubeless tire. Um, so okay. same thing as the slime. Um, it it's definitely a help. Um, some people will say that it adds more weight, but the amount of weight that it adds, you're really not going to notice. Yeah. Um, that's more rolling weight than actual, than anything else. And it's not really, yeah, I wouldn't think you would notice it that much. I mean, it's not like you're going to fill the entire tube with the slime anyway. Yeah, no. Enough just to coat the tire or the tube. The other thing that people do too. So I, I mentioned earlier that, that. Some people run a, a solid rubber tire, which is, is your very basic. Um, there's the pneumatics like mine, but then you can also get a foam core that actually replaces the tube. And that way you don't have to worry about any sort of flats. Um, they aren't as hard as what you can get the, the pneumatics and lightweight. Um, so your lowest weight, lowest, your, your easiest effort is, is with a high pressure pneumatic tire. Right. Um, if you are worried about flats or just not real good at changing them or anything like that, you can always take your pneumatic and put that foam core in. And again, pretty much any bike shop will have them. Um, they have the sizes that fit the different rims and the different tire sizes and things like that. Um, it's another option that, that people can have. Um, if they want the the solid rubber tires are usually the heaviest, slowest, most uncomfortable tire, you know, or, and and wheel combination. So a lot of people don't do those anymore. Did you? I think you just froze there, Dominic, or did you just stop talking? Yeah, I think we just lost Dominic for a moment there. Okay. Uh, I got a little feedback okay. on the on the slime as well. Um, okay, so go ahead. When you when you slime the wheel, one of the things I notice is reinflating my tire after it has had slime in it. Um, you know, sometimes it'll get stuck in the nozzle, so that's something to be aware of. It's harder sometimes to pump up the tire, um, so there's going to be have to be a little more effort in that. Um, it can it can clog the uh, it can clog the valve. So yeah, that's yeah. just something to be aware of. And then a lot of, a lot of times you can get tires that have like a, uh, like a Kevlar strip on the inside too. So I go through regular bike shops uh, because they're about half the price of the wheels you order through the medical stores. Um, so do most bike shops carry uh, uh, what would be compatible on wheelchairs, wheels? Not, not everyone. I'm, I'm finding that some do and some don't. Okay. Um, so, it, I, so is it something can, that those that don't, are they willing to order them for you? Yeah, you yeah. They're, that has them and, yeah, and they're they willing to order you. They're willing to order them, absolutely. And the other thing okay. with uh, the black tires that I get uh, from my chair, um, the tread lasts a lot longer, like a heck of a lot longer. Like, if, if I were to get a, one of the gray material tires, I'd be lucky to get three months out of it. Whereas with a, with a regular bike tire, I can get like a year, year and a half, two years. Wow. Out. Yeah. I mean the, the extension of, you know, the lifetime of the tire is definitely goes a lot farther. 
And then also you're dealing with uh, that Kevlar strip that can go in there that's, that's native to some of those tires actually. Um, or you can get it, you can get just a Kevlar sheath that you put on the inner tube itself. So there's a couple different ways you can do that if you don't want to go the slime method, or you can double down and you can do slime and a Kevlar, which is what I've done because some of the spear, spurs here in Arizona are uh, tire puncturing spear, uh, yeah, spurs. So you, you, run over some of those, you run over things like goat heads and those can really go right through a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. What brand yeah. tire do you use, Eric? Because when I, my bag shop charges like a lot more, like say on marathons than Sport Aid does. So last time I got uh, pre and I don't really like them, so. You know, I, I don't remember. It's been a while. I think it's a Schwinn, um, but I, I could be very wrong. Um, I know the, the tires I paid for were like 40 bucks. Oh, sure. And, for, for, you know, for a piece. Uh, I think that was, I think that was a pair. I mean, I, I got them for a decent, you know, I get them for a decent price because, you know, they're 24s and I usually get, I usually would get what's called uh, the road tires. So they're a thinner tire. They have a little less tread on them, um, but they're really good for road tires. I mean, they, they have high endurance. You can go a long ways with a road tire like that. And uh, the, only, the only downside is they are black, so you're going to get streaks on the floor. You're going to notice the dirt a little more um, in that respect. But to be honest, the trade-off is, is it's it, – I don't even have to think about it because like I said, a gray tire will last me three months. So what so, is the slime oh, you guys are talking about? So it's a, it's a product you can get it at, at Walmart or any bike shop and, and it's a liquid. It comes in a little, little container. I mean, you can buy it in a, in a big jug, but um, it comes in a small container and you take out the, the valve on the, um, tube and then you actually squeeze it into the tire it actually tells you how much to put into the into each tire and then you put the valve back into it and and then reinflate the tire so it's a it's a it's a coating that as you are rolling it's it's constantly moving around inside the tire and 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 provides um so if you get a puncture in it in the top in the tube the idea is that that's the slime will actually kind of forms this I don't know, stringy kind of stuff that goes into the into the hole and and fills it in and literally stops it from leaking. Oh wow! Does that does that sound about right for you guys that use slime on your tires? Yeah, it it basically is like you said. It it the the air pressure that's in the tire it forces it into whatever hole you've just put in there. So the the yeah. tire pressure as it's escaping, it's drawing that fluid out, and as soon as it hits air outside of the tire it dries almost instantly and it plugs that hole like a like a rubber plug or anything like that um the, the plugs don't last a long time so if you do have a puncture and the slime fills it make sure that you still do go through and replace the tube or fix the tube because that repair won't last indefinitely um yeah. it just keeps you going and gets you home the other thing we were talking about tire sizes and, and like with bike shops and stuff like that. And what you want to do is the, the best thing to do is look on the sidewall of the tire and you'll see like a series of numbers. A lot of times it'll say like 25 dash, like mine says 25 dash 559. It's a two digit number, then a dash and, and then a three digit number. Um, what that means is that is the first number is the width of the tire. The second number is the diameter of the wheel. So 25 means that it's, it, it, that's in centimeters, um, so, or millimeters. So it, um, it's 25 millimeters wide, which is an, an inch. And then the 559 is a 25 inch wheel or what they consider a mountain 26, which is a standard size bicycle tire. So since I learned that in the very beginning, I've stayed with that size of wheel. Um, 24 inch wheels are a little bit more, um, or I should say a little less common, but they're still pretty prevalent and any bike shop will order them. Um, if you stay within those two sizes, you can pretty much you know, go anywhere to get tires. Um, and like, like I think Eric was saying, or Brian was saying, 
when when you go to like a wheelchair shop, usually it's anywhere from two to three times the cost of a, a tire. If you're buying it from a wheelchair, like a DME, than if you go to a bike shop. Um, and um, I've used Kenda now, um, Kenda tires for probably 15, <laughs> close to 20 years. Um, and I've had really, really good puncture resistance from them. I hardly ever have flats and they're black, like Mar like uh, Eric was talking about, where their black rubber tires are what's considered a non-marking tire. So even though you get the longevity of the black carbon wheel, you, you don't get the marks in your carpet. They won't leave the little like scuff marks on like a basketball court or anything like that. Um, so I, I absolutely say, I, I, again, I'm, I don't know, I'm like brand dropping today or something. Um, but just things that I found that, that really work out. Um, the Kenda tires have been really, really good for me. Um, oh, Kenda tires? It's called Kenda, K-E-N-D-A. Yeah, they make a great, um, I like their mountain bike tire, the Kenda Cobra. Um, oh, yeah, man, the Cobra? So like, you should have like, you should be like NASCAR and have a whole bunch of stickers in the background there for tires. And well, things. I, I and have the, kind of stuff. Yeah. Is a monster drink or something. Uh, so, um, so when you're when you're going through your chair, um, you know, certainly looking at um, signs of wear and tear. I mean, and those are here. So, you know, looking at the at the at the tread pattern on it, is it really starting to look like a, you know like a slick, a racing slick, in, in that the pattern is almost On it, their tires are bald, you know, just like your tires, well, it's time to replace the tires. So, doing that same thing, um, looking at the um, uh, looking at your at your tires to make sure that they are in, in good working order. The other thing that, that just like um, when Dominic had the, the, the caster wheel off, I will I'll take the, the tire of the, the wheel off here and I'll do the same thing he did with his tire. I'm actually letting it spin. And I'm feeling, you know, what do the what do the bearings feel like on the inside here? Am I feeling a lot of chattering, or is it feeling really nice and smooth to me? If it's really feeling nice and smooth to me, then I know that uh, that my bearings are, are in pretty good shape. Um, a lot of people don't know that you can actually adjust the, um, you know, I don't know if you ever, if you ever put your wheels on your chair. And you can take a hold of the hub and you can shake the wheel back and forth. Is everyone anyone familiar with that? So if you if you take a hold of the wheel of the wheel hub on your chair and you try to slide it back and forth, it really should have a very tiny amount of play to it. It shouldn't just move back and forth like you know, like a, a an eighth inch or you know, quarter inch of play in there. It should be a pretty tight fit. And there's a little we'll bring this closer here so you can hopefully see on the on an axle. If you take the axle out, there's a nut and it's threaded on here. So you can actually adjust that, that little bit of play that um, occurs in the wheel. So if I move this nut closer to the um, hub, I'm actually making that tighter fit. Now what I don't wanna do is have such a tight fit that this doesn't stay locked in place. You know, you know that if you push in on here, that's what releases the little bearings. That's how the wheel comes off of, of most everybody's chair, I think, if you're, except for the you guys in power. Um, those aren't usually knockoffs. So these just will pop off the, the chair. So you'd want it to be so tight that the bearings here don't lock the, the wheel in place and cause it, cause it to come off because there's nothing like rolling down the hallway and having your wheel go rolling past you as you're, as you're rolling down the hallway. I'm sure that's never happened to anybody, right? Um, so making sure that that is, right. and, and also taking it out just to make sure it's not scuffed up or marred or anything like that, um, that would be reason to, to replace it. And, uh, but the biggest thing is just making sure that it's rolling well in the, in the hub. And then the other thing I'll look at is on the spokes themselves, you know, are there, are there cuts in them? Um, if it is a, so these are Spinergy wheels that have got, um, carbon fiber and they've got a plastic cover on them. So I'm checking the cover on here to make sure that there's no big cuts or nicks in it that can cause problems with the, with the, um, the spoke. 
if it's a, a, a standard wire spoke, a metal spoke, I'm actually, one of the things that I'll do is I'll take uh, a screwdriver or a wrench or something. Now it won't be the same thing on this because this is a, these are all plastic, but I'll, I'll, I'll rub it, I'll run it all around the spokes and they should all make the same sound. So if I go ting, 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 and then I hear a tongue, that's telling me that one of those, one or more of those spokes is, has come loose on the chair and that can cause the wheel to come out around and that can cause all kinds of problems for you in rolling. So I see somebody holding up their wheel there and it looks like they have, um, are those metal spokes on there? He, you're muted, Amber. Sorry, I'm playing with my uh, daughter's pediatric chair, so I wasn't sure. I can't hear you yeah, as well so, right now, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, uh, so I think it's, it looks like she has metal spokes on her, on her wheels. Yeah, there's some metal spokes on this one. Yeah, yeah, so yep. what I usually will do is I'll take a, a, either, well, I've got an Allen wrench in my hand, but I'll take a screwdriver and just, you don't know how I has kids we used to put well at least I did I put um, playing cards in the in the spokes of my bicycle to make that you know the click 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 noise well it's the same thing here it should be the same should be the same noise all the way around if there is a noise that's different as you go across the spoke that's telling you that 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 spoke is probably loose you need to have you know it's just a, another tool you might need to have in your arsenal is a um, is a, a spoke wrench. It's just a small little wrench that's designed for tightening and or loosening um, spokes. So if you find that they get, if so if they, if a bunch of them come loose, then you can actually have a tire that comes, a wheel that comes out of round or out of true, and that's when you take it to the bike shop and have them re-true. Um, the, the other thing is, is just kind of looking at the the upholstery. So are there are there wear are there wear marks? Are there tears in the upholstery? If there's tears in the upholstery, that's when you're gonna contact your um, your local dealer and and say, hey, I need to have the, the seat upholstery replaced. I need to have the back upholstery replaced. And that might be the same thing for you guys in power chairs as well. That you're gonna have some kind of upholstery on probably the back or even on the maybe the cover of your cushion, same thing. So if you've got either tears in it or wear marks in it, that would be a reason to either replacing or replacing the tire cushion or just replacing the cover of the, of the cushion. Most cushion, uh, all, co all uh, cushions are designed that you can replace the, the cover on them pretty easily and also just take it off to put it in the laundry too. It's not a bad idea to eat to, even if you don't have any um, incontinence issues, it's not a bad idea just to throw it in the laundry once in a while because you know you're sitting in the chair all day long and and sweating and moving around and stuff. So just throwing in the laundry has a it leaves you with a fresher smell during the day. Um, so looking at the if if you're in most most rigid frame chairs like the one I've got here has got a, a series of of bolts that hold the the uh, seat upholstery to the frame of the chair. So most of those are gonna be either um, a, uh, an Allen wrench or maybe a, a screwdriver. So I'll just take uh, an Allen wrench and I'll just go over each one and just kind of just double check that it's, that it's snug. You don't have to have the strength of Hercules to keep it tight. It's just trying to make sure that it's, that it's snug and it's not moving around on you. And, and that way, it's just kind of keeping the upholstery. If if these are, if the screws are not coming loose on here, then that doesn't that allow that doesn't allow the upholstery to, to move around and come loose on you as well. Um, and so on the on the the back, there's even some there'll be some screws there where the back, depending on the type of back you have, where the back is attached to the frame of the of the chair. And uh, just adjusting those those screws as well. So some of them, it, it's going to depend on the manufacturer of the chair that you have. So I have a, a tie light sitting in front of me here. So it is just Allen wrenches and um, seven sixteenths inch. Um, in the case of this chair, and 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 more and more chairs are going to metric. So the, the chair that I have here is not metric. It's all SAE. So um, I can just use standard um, Allen wrenches on it. But you need to check with your um, 
check with your owner's manual on your particular chair to see is it metric or is it are they standard fittings so, so you need to check that so you're using the correct using the correct down wrenches or sockets for that um, for your particular chair but um, you know it's a good idea just to kind of go through looking at the even at the frame here for any kind of wear and tear you know a lot of times you're taking your chair in and out of your vehicles it gets dragged on the ground you've been flying somewhere you took a, a, a trip on, on a plane and and the nice people at the airport were able to um, really do some nice decorations on your chair so make sure that they didn't um, you know cause any dents or, or you know breakage anywhere in the frame mm -hmm then that could be certainly uh, a reason to maybe look at um, replacing that particular, the, the, the frame on the chair or getting a new chair. Um, and then just continuing to look over uh, if you have any straps on it, like this chair has uh, a calf strap on it. So just making sure that it's, um, that it's staying in place, that it, it again doesn't have any tears or, or um, rips in it or anything that's causing it, uh, any kind of problem. Um, most of the time when I have, uh, and going through um, looking for, for loose screws and things like that, it's, it's normally, if you're, if you're checking it on a fairly regular basis, you're gonna find them pretty quickly. So you're gonna find that you're, you're gonna have very infrequent issues with your chair because you, you're taking the time to make sure that it's maintained well. Mm -hmm. um, but usually when, when I have people tell me that, um, that they're having a lot of issues with how their chair is rolling, um, it's because they have not done any maintenance to their chair. And as, as when Dominic was talking about how he's cleaning the casters and, and what happens when, we're, when we don't clean out the casters, um, it, it's an important thing to be able to, um, to keep those clean to help with that chair rolling. Because that's the, those are probably the, that's the, not probably, that is the closest moving part to the ground and that's usually where you have the most problems is with uh, with the casters uh, getting hair in the in the caster, even though the into the bearings, even though the bearings are sealed with enough hair built up around there, and that rolling pressure and the heat can actually force the hair in there into the bearing, and it's like pouring sand in the bearing, and it just destroys them. Um, so it's um, it's something that's kind of important to really look at, and and a lot of times I've been around chairs and people that that I can hear them rolling down the hallway. Their bearings are so bad because you hear this grinding sound as they come down the hallway, and they wonder why their chair doesn't coast very well and move very well. It's like well because you you know your bearings are shot, and and uh, so and I'm sure there's lots of you have seen other people's chairs that are 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 not well taken care of or not well cared for, if you will. Um, so it's important to, to, um, to really try to maintain your chair so that it can serve you as well as it possibly can. Um, but it's something you ought to do at least, you know, at least once a month, kind of give it a once over. And, and depending on, you know, your particular house situation, if you're, if you're someone who's got you know, you're living with, uh, you have long hair and you're, you've got a couple of kids with long hair and you have cats and dogs in the house. Well, you may be cleaning out those bearings more frequently than, um, than, than the person who doesn't have all that stuff uh, around their house. Um, you guys that are in power chairs, um, there's, you know, as far as maintenance goes, it's really making sure that you're trying to keep the chair clean. And, and that goes certainly for the for manual chair as well. Trying to keep your chair as clean as you can because a clean chair rolls better and it's, it's going to be easier for you and or your friends that to handle it for getting it in and out of vehicles and stuff. And um, so it just makes it easier for, for maneuverability. But for, for power chairs, um, it certainly makes sure that you're charging your chair every day. Make sure you're charging it all night long. That's going to help to allow those batteries to last certainly as long as possible. Um, is getting a good full eight eight plus hours of charging on those on those batteries, um, especially if you're using the chair every day. You should charge it every night. And then um, uh, you know I talk about keeping it clean. You're gonna you're gonna have to check over tires once in a while. Now most most power chairs have got uh, they'll have the the tire and then inside of it, kind of what Dominic was talking about earlier, it'll have a solid insert inside of that. So. Generally, with most power chairs, you don't have to worry about getting a flat tire unless you have a tire that's got that got tubes in it. 
And there's, there are some people that like the ride of that um, with, with the tubes in them. Um, but uh, so you have to look and check on, on tires as well, and as well as the casters. Are the, is the tread on the casters worn away? Is the tread on your drive tires worn away? That's time to you know contact your dealer and and get those uh, get those replaced so that you or your chair is able to to operate as optimally as it is able to um, for the you know, for the places you want to go with it. Um, and then and certainly with with power chairs, it is you know you have the other uh, uh, other added thing is that you need to be aware of the weather if you're going outside. Now, obviously it doesn't rain here very often, but when it does, we usually get a good deluge. So during monsoon times and season, I tell people in power chairs, keep a, keep a, a plastic shopping bag, like from your, you know, from your, from your grocery, you know, I, so I shop at Safeway. Mm -hmm. So keep, keep a Safeway bag underneath, underneath your seat cushion that you can get to that if it gets caught out in the rain, put it over the joystick on the chair and then you can still keep driving. Just put your hand over the joystick and, and off you go. Most of the electronics underneath the chair, underneath the chair um, up underneath the shroud, they're pretty well protected from, you know, from your average rain. Now, don't go driving through, you know, four feet of water. You're going you're gonna to be stalled there, and you're going to be sitting in the water for a while. But um, if you just have just something to cover up your joystick while you're out and about, that will go a long way towards keeping you uh, moving as you're as you're going from point A to point B. Definitely. Thank you. Um, Good idea. I yeah. I got something yeah. I'd like to add to that. Um, sure. So here in Arizona, it gets super duper 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 hot, <laughs> and uh, one of the things that I know that I have issues with is my frame will actually burn my skin if I'm wearing shorts and my skin's touching the frame. So I took some leather lace, some just leather shoelace. You can get a Hobby Lobby. I got a hundred foot of it. I just, I wound it all up and uh, double laced it over my metal frame that my knees bump up against. So I can wear shorts. Same thing. I have, to, you know, I'll have to wear gloves in the summer because you know, it gets so hot that I can stay out 15 minutes and then the frame is like really hot to touch. And so that's something also to be very aware of uh, with the summers that are going to be here. Um, the other thing is there was an occurrence one time someone was in a power chair and they fell off the sidewalk. They fell out of their chair. They were unable to get up out of the chair. And because of that, they overheated and they ended up passing away. I say that as a cautionary tone because when you have this type of heat that you're dealing with, if you're in a power chair or you're in a wheelchair, you know, have some backups with you. Have your phone next to you. Make sure you can reach your phone. Make sure you have someone, you know, you can reach out to if you need to. That's important. Or make sure that you know how to get to where you got to go to take care of yourself. You know, if you do fall out of the chair, what are you going to be able to do to take care of yourself for that? You know, just Explore those options, know those options for yourself so that, you know, it's not normally an if, it's a when, you know, this stuff happens. And, you know, we can, we can change it from passing away to I had a real inconvenient time, you know, something like that. Good, good point. Thanks. Um, when, when it comes to making adjustments to your, to your manual chair, you know, a lot of times when you when you got your chair, um, especially if it was your first chair, a lot of times the therapist or the the um, the the person who did delivering the chair, they're trying to make the chair you know as safe as possible for you to be able to get around in, and, and sometimes that makes it um, a bit of a. I think it sometimes makes rolling the chair. Um, harder. Um, what, what kind of things have you guys done to, that you've changed on your chairs to make it so that chair rolls better for you? Um, anybody? Because I've got some things that I'll talk about, but um, but I want to see what you guys, Dominic. One of one of the things that was a change, um, and, and again, it's it's building building the chair and, and having the chair designed for you, fitment wise. Um, the other thing was um, on body mechanics and, and being able to utilize your body, use stronger muscle groups, which actually makes it easier to push your chair. 
So in essence, rather than, you know, making something lightweight or higher performance, you're actually making your body perform better or the combination of your body and your chair. Um, so one of the big things for me was, and I don't think I can get far enough away, but when you, when you're sitting in your chair, you're sitting in your normal position, if you put your hands down to your axle and your fingers are right at your axle, that's like, that's supposed to be what I was taught the like optimal point of, of where you're sitting, the height of your chair. Um, and, and so what that does is it, it, you're not straining your body. Um, the other thing is bringing the chair in as narrow as you can, not causing any sort of pressure issues like in your hips or anything like that. But bringing your chair in narrow so that, you know, you can get your, you try to get your, your, um, your wheels right underneath your shoulders and you keep your elbows tucked in so that when you're pushing, again, you're using these really strong muscle groups. Um, so the chair itself, having it built in a specific way, that will help its, its performance and, and its ease. Um, and one of the other things that I wanted to touch upon too um, while Brian was talking about it with, you know, doing, doing these, these different. Oops. That was just short of the, don't ever do this ever cast and they rust. Yeah. Then you, um, if you, uh, if the casters get frozen, if those bearings get frozen, um, oh, I think I'm, I'm losing you guys. Everyone else is frozen. Cool. Uh, let's see. We're here. You're still moving. I still see you. Okay. All right. My yes. my internet's saying it's unstable, which is sort of fitting. Uh, is that you that's unstable, or your <laughs> internet's unstable? It's it's D all of the above. Okay. Um, so um, when, when it comes to doing these sort of things, what it does is it not only keeps your chair moving better on a daily basis and it's easier to use, but it also keeps from these other like more catastrophic repairs from needing to be made. And, and what happens is one, it's cost to replace these bearings and, and do, you know, big changes. Say something freezes up, something gets really, really wrong. Now it becomes expensive. And nine times out of 10, when you bring it to some sort of a repair shop for them to repair it, they're going to take it for a long time. And you're going to be without your chair for quite a while. If you get a loaner or whatever. So the more you keep on the preventative maintenance and you do these things, the less likely something like that's going to happen. So well, when I, when I was talking modifications, I was thinking, thinking, making change. Now you, you brought up a really good point about where the fingers end up on, on the axle. Um, but also like changing things like performance for the chair. So changing things like center of gravity, the seat slope and stuff and stuff like that. Um, have you have you guys made those modifications to your chair since you got it, or is it something that you just okay? This is what they did for me, and this is how my chair is going to be, and this is the way I'm going to leave it. I was I was in that camp. This is what they did for me, and this is how I do it because I didn't know anything about chairs, and my chair okay. was really uncomfortable. They didn't put a dump because because I'm an incomplete. And um, the chairs, I mean, as you saw, it's a colors wheelchair. It's lighter than the chair I use now, but it feels heavier rolling it. Even, even, if, I, even if I put on um, the marathon ties, it still always felt heavier rolling that chair. So I've learned that the chair is for me, not for the salesman. And so that's why I got the icon because as a woman, I like to think, I like to change things all the time. And so I do change my dump often depending on how my body feels. And so I like the icon for that reason, but I'm still not a hundred percent happy all the time because, and that's why I have to keep doing it. But um, I think I need to change my casters again. And so a lot of, a lot of times, 
it's not necessarily the chair itself. Uh, certainly, you know, if the chair is a heavy chair, then yeah, that's going to cause you problems. Right. But you can take a super ultra lightweight chair, like I've got the, the tie light that's next to me here, and I can make this chair roll like a tank just by making some, I can take things out of adjustment. So for instance, if I, find I have center of gravity... Right? I find some yes. chairs, and that, the reason why I didn't change anything on the colors because it's not very changeable. And so, and like, there are some chairs that, yeah, you're right. Yeah. There are some chairs that aren't changeable, um, but there also may have been some when the chair was built. There, there's a lot of times some fine tuning that may end up going to a chair to make it so it does roll better. Um, mm -hmm. And so, one of those might be the the um, the center of gravity adjustment on the chair. So, center of gravity adjustment on a chair is taking, if this is the backrest, it's moving the axle forward or backward in relation to that backrest. Right. And all but, my colors, I can't move it any more than it's already moved. That's part of the problem. So, but if, and let me see if I can pull this around here so you can see this, because yes, it may be that you have it adjusted to its max excursion, but if the points are not at the same position. So here's the camber tube on, on the tie light here. So this is actually clamped to the frame and I can move it infinitely up and down here. If one side is not square to the other side, I'm gonna exaggerate. So I've got my axle like this, my chair is not gonna roll straight and I'm gonna, it's gonna feel very heavy when I push it because the wheels are fighting each other. Now I've exaggerated here, but I, I've, I've had chairs that were literally like an eighth of an inch, actually less than an eighth of an inch out of, out of square. And it was causing all kinds of problems to that person. It wasn't rolling straight. It felt really heavy to the person when they're rolling it. So how do you know? At, what's that? How do you know? Because I so always what, wondered that. So one of the things that I'll do is I'll take a tape measure on this particular chair. I can find two points out of the same. So I've got a point here and point here that are on my camber tube and I measure it to an, a, a fixed point on the frame. So in this case, I would use like the end of the frame here. I can measure from here to here. If they're the same, I know that the wheels are square to the frame. If one side is maybe farther forward than the other or vice versa, then I need to square that up so that those roll straight. The other thing that can cause problems, if you have a chair that you can actually adjust the angle on the caster. So the casters are designed that there's a, a generally there's some kind of a flat spot on it that keeps the wheel square to the ground. So at a right angle. If you've got one caster that maybe is in a trailing position on the arm or even in a forward position on the arm, that can also cause problems on how the chair rolls or w rolls well or doesn't roll well. So I'll put a square on there and I'll make sure that that's square to the ground. And a lot of times I have found that when someone's chair is not rolling well, that's because the casters are out of square as well. You have any suggestions, Corbin? Anything else that you would look for for He's your way making the helping the chair roll better? I think another thing that I've seen, if it's somebody has adjusted their foot plate, then sometimes it's out of whack yep. and it 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 bends that frame. It, it, I actually it, have yeah, the it tweaks the frame to where it's at square. Can you hear me, Corbin? I can't hear you. You did. You're muted, Corbin. Somebody unmute him. Okay, no, I'm there back. You go. There you go. Cool. Sorry, I had I had some I had some customers. Um, so, yeah, um, like what she was just saying about the um, if you adjust your footrest or your axle, if the, if they move and everything like that. Um, sometimes, if you if that's if that's out of square, it can tweak the entire frame. Um, yeah, th there was a guy a guy a number of years ago that he just could not complain about his chair all the time that it was out of square and everything. And that's what it was is he, he was 
really trying to get his foot rest to a certain position and would just over tighten it and it would tweak his chair. And he just would not believe that it was his foot rest was, uh, it was about a quarter inch lower on one side than the other side. Um, that'll, tweak, that'll tweak a frame easy. Yeah. So what Especially I like to do much. is, what I like to do is I, I uh, will, if I'm setting up somebody's chair or fixing somebody's chair, I've got a nice big flat table. Um, it's a, it's actually like a corner office table. So it has like a half round or a quarter round that I can get into, but then the table's big enough that I can get an entire chair up there and everything like that. And it's a nice flat surface that I can get squares on and, and all that kind of stuff. And um, so I, I like to do that. And then you loosen everything up, get everything square and then uh, get everything set up and then start tightening things up, you know, slowly. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just a matter of, you know, keeping things clean, um, going through your chair, you know, once a month or it, it depends. It, it, it really depends on how often you should uh, go through your chair on your environment. Um, but going through and, uh, being in tune with your chair, like you can hear or feel when something's a little bit off. Um, like if you're going over cracks or something like that and you hear, like a loud clunking or something like that. Uh, maybe there's a loose screw in your seat, on your, on your seat rails that's holding your upholstery and, and that's moving up and down and causing a little bit of a noise. And anything that's moving that shouldn't be moving is going to break. Um, anything that's not moving that should be moving is going to break. Um, so, you know, those things are, are done like that, you know, on purpose. Um, and then, uh, there, a lot of times, chair companies haven't really been doing it uh, a lot lately, but over tightening is a huge problem, um, especially when most hardware screws and bolts and stuff like that are steel, and a lot of chair companies are putting those into a softer metal, a softer alloy like aluminum or something like that. So people will over tighten that stuff. And what that does is the steel is, is a lot stronger. So if you over tighten it, it, it's actually starts to pull the threads of the softer metal and distort them. So now the next time you take that screw out, those threads are, are messed up. So you're not gonna be able to get a screw back in there. I've had to replace riv nuts um, in seat upholstery, you know, on a whole bunch of people's chairs that, you know, they just, they bury those things with like an impact gun or something. Um, yeah. Um, th those of you guys that have um, camber in your wheels, does everyone know what, what camber is on a wheel? No. So camber is that the relationship of the wheel at, at, the, at an angle to the to the ground. So this would be this would be so this is zero degrees camber straight up and down, and then at varying degrees between generally ten and uh, between two and twelve degrees of camber. Um, my point with that is that if you have a chair that has a couple of degrees of camber in it and the axle housing has come loose, if that rotates, it's actually going to turn that, it's going to take that camber, which is supposed to be like this, it's actually going to turn it and now you're going to either have toe in in the front or, or toe out in the rear. So you're actually, in a, I'll use a skiing analogy, if people know what a snow, plow, what snow plowing is when you're skiing. That's when your skis are in a V to help slow you down. Well, you're working against yourself when you're pushing that chair. And that is another thing that would make that chair feel heavy when you're rolling the chair is that you are actually snow plowing with that chair as you're rolling around. Um, and you guys that are in um, power chairs. So Gene, what, do you have any things that you kind of are looking at when you're, when you're kind of going through your chair um, to see how things are working on it? Oh, definitely. Um, we were talking about tires earlier. If I let, and I have pneumatic tires, if I let them, if the tread gets really low on those tires, uh, it's really difficult to even go over the threshold uh, outside of uh, my front door. And if it's wet, um, they'll spin and then one will catch and it'll, it'll jerk you to the right or to the left. And, um, and that can be, if you're not prepared for that, that can be really difficult. Or it's even hard getting up the ramp in my van. It's really wet. Yeah. Um, so again, it's, I like it's, it's, it's something to watch out for on your tires, definitely. You know, a lot of things go around tires. 
yeah, you want to maintain them if you can. And then um, I do have some dump in my chair. It's about a three degree. And that makes a huge difference to keep my hip, um, my hip flexion. Um, but yeah, you know, you just got to watch your chair. It's, it's my independence. And um, without it working, I am dead in the water. So I'm constantly, when I'm getting out of my chair and my attendant or girlfriend is, is wheeling it to the side, I'm always looking at it. Try to watch the cushion at least weekly. And then I'm looking at things, you know, if something catches my eye, it's just a, and then invariably a, a, a screw will fall out. So I'm like, where the hell did that come from? That happens a lot in my shower chair. They just rust away, so you gotta replace them. But uh, yeah, I've got a plethora of different screws and bolts from Ace Hardware that I keep. So I think I'm well set. <laughs> yeah, you end up with quite a wheelchair screw collection, right? <laughs> I do. Um, does anybody, um, Karen, do you have um, uh, Sarah's video uh, on tire changing? And how long is it? Uh, yeah, let me find it. I think okay, I'll, let you, I'll let you find it. So we'll kind of talk a little bit about um, about different um, different accessories and toys and things that uh, that people use for for getting around or not for yeah for getting around in different terrain. Um, so um, um, you guys that have like um, um, off road bikes or road bikes and things like that, um, can you talk a little bit about them? And if you're in a position to show them, that'd be terrific. I, I can try to show some of my toys. I don't know if my internet will allow me. Um, I actually got out of my off-road chair. Um, so let's see here. Sorry for the ride. Um, That's okay. I'm not too dizzy yet. So that is... Oh. Whoa! <laughs> That's badass. So it has, it has Fox mountain bike shocks and full suspension on the rear. Let me see if I can pull it where you can maybe see a little better. Yeah, let me see that again. I like that was just a quick flash. So what do you use this for? So that's when I go hiking or like if I, if I want to go like even skiing, uh, I guess I'm out of the snow right now. So you're, you're, all of a sudden your, your voice changed, Dom. Um, it, it changed? There we go. Yeah. You're far I, away. Yeah. It, maybe it's just because it got, yeah, not that, yeah, it changed on the computer. Not that, I don't think your voice actually changed. Oh, it changed right. on the okay. computer. So you must have just turned away from the microphone, I think, when you turned your, when you turned your computer around. Oh. Talk a little, talk a little louder. Maybe that will help. So. I use that chair when I go hiking um, or just even if I'm, if I'm going to go on my mountain bike and I know I'm going to be, you know, in a dirt parking lot or whatever, I'll bring that chair just to get around in the meantime. Um, and also if I go snow skiing, um, it gets around really, really well in the snow. Um, and this one is just basically it's all I've done is it's the, the box WCMX chair. Um, but we put larger front casters on it and then we put the knobby wheels on the back. Um, other than that, it's, it's basically the same, you know, off the shelf of, of that chair. Um, we tune the suspension a little bit different just, you know, for different applications, but that's, that's splitting hairs. Um, the other thing that I put in it too was, um, I put in, uh, you can get them as just like snowboard bindings. Um, but they're sticking out the back right now. Um, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's a click strap seat belt. Um, and that keeps me in the chair. Um, so this will actually go around my waist and then I can, I can cinch it down, um, and, and make sure that I'm, you know, in the chair nice and tight. Um, that I kind of use the chair if I do crash, which does happen. Um, I, I kind of use the chair as a roll cage rather than, and, and it's much easier to get up when I'm in my chair rather than out of my chair and trying to climb back in. Um, so that's that one. Um, okay, I think we, oh, there, we, we lost it from you. Did you, do I still have you? Yeah. Uh, now, yes. yeah now you're back. Now you're back. Okay. Okay. Um, 
So does anybody else have any things, uh, different uh, devices that they use for either for sports or just for exercise or getting out and going places that they want to share with us? Um, I have a couple, but I, I don't have direct access to them, but I do have all the website stuff, pictures pulled up from if you guys would like, if, if that would be appropriate. Yeah, go ahead and you, you can pull them up and, and so go ahead and share your screen and, um, and then we'll see what you got. I just saw, uh, is that a bike, Dominic? So yeah, so this is, okay. uh, these are, oh, we'll come back there's to there's Dominic because I want to see his yeah. bike. Yeah, yeah, go, go. Go, go ahead and share your screen. Uh, I can wait for Dominic. It's no problem. Somebody go. So, all yeah. right. So, these are two of my bikes. The, the one in front there, that wow. is Force 3. Oh, we got Sarah there. Woke up there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And that one, I have the knobby tires on it, and I have it set for trail riding. Um, and then the one, I don't know if you can see that one. That one is for the Active Adaptations Hammerhead. And the biggest difference between the two is that the Hammerhead, the one that you can see right now, that one, you're in a kneeling position when you ride. Um, so your hands are up, your body is up over the hand cranks as a hand cycle. Whereas this one here, it's your typical where you're reclined back. Um, and so I mean, there's a lot of differences in capability and comfort and, and things like that. Um, but I have, I have one of each, so I can I can play whichever I want. So which which one gets the most workout? The most workout is the is the hammerhead. Um, okay. That one is definitely a lot harder to use. Um, and in fact, I uh, I kind of mucked up my ribs a little bit on a ride this morning because um, the riding position is actually rather uncomfortable. Um, it's not a joyride machine. Um, it is definitely for the the much harder terrain uh much better in downhill but it's again not a joy ride whereas the one that's reclined you can ride on the path you can ride on the trails you're reclined back it's nice comfy um you can ride for much longer but you just can't do as hard of terrain as what the other one can do so you kind of decide you you you've you've made your choice of what you're going to ride based on which bike you're taking okay exactly um so so go ahead eric um okay i have a i have a couple things i wanted to show um during um i haven't some of these i haven't done in a little while but i wanted to at least show them to you um this right here is the uh the wheels that i use to go on the beach um <sighs> So when wow. I got married, my wife got me these. these. And uh, they're really, they're, it's a really good, uh, really good wheel. A little heavy. It's a little heavy. Um, but they work really well. Um, I have to, I find I have to pop a wheelie. So I need, I, I've been looking for a way to get my casters off the beach. And one of the things I've been looking at is this device here. It's called the free wheel. And yeah, I'll show yeah. you what I, I don't know if any of you have ever seen this to before. Be able to... Yeah. So. so what the free wheel does is it takes your front casters off of the ground, and now you use this uh, large, I think it's like it's either 8 or 10 inch diameter wheel, yep. and, um, and you, can, you can steer your chair and go over terrain. You don't have to keep yourself in a wheelie all the time. So it's great for gravel. I, 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 I've seen, I had a, a veteran I did one of these with and he rolled around in gravel and grass and he even used a smart drive to, uh, to go over the gravel and grass with this. They were a great combination together. And yeah. um, you can do all kinds of different terrain and probably even, even sand. Now it's not that wide of a tire though, Eric. It's really, it's probably, um, you know, about the, well, I guess about the width of maybe a mountain bike tire would be like a Kenda Cobra. 
Um, yeah. maybe so maybe that, that won't work, huh? Yeah. But it, it certainly would be something worth trying or to contact the manufacturer to see if maybe they have something that is, if they have different tire options for it as well. Yeah, I know this is a specific person that made this design and sells it independently. So um, this is, I don't think they have other op brands, but there's, there's a lot of stuff out there, people. Um, one thing I wanted to also show you is you know, there's this right here. Now, this is a monoski. I used to do this back in the day. And um, this is not me, by the way. But I, I do have a picture of me somewhere, but I just don't have it handy. But what this is, is this is a ski. And then you sit on something. What's, it looks like it's almost built like a fake knee is really what it's built like. It's a, Sometimes they look like a parallelogram with a shock going the other way. So you'll have the the box frame that'll fold this way and then you'll have a motorcycle shock that'll push you back up. Um, that's typically how it is. And then the two, the two riggers on the side, those are just like half canes that um, have skis on the bottom and then they have little teeth on the back. And so you can, you can put the teeth down to slow yourself down. But basically those riggers are just for keeping yourself up. It's not, they're not made for doing much more more like a, it's almost like you would treat a pole where you do pole plants when you're doing your skiing. That's what these are like. And you just keep them on the ground and then you're using them to keep your balance really is all you're doing. Um, and it, it, it's, it's really fun. <laughs> it's, it's really, really fun. I know Corbin has done um, some um, ski clinics. Corbin's got all kinds of stuff going on too, by the way. Um, that guy, that guy has a cornucopia of, items at his disposal so i'm going to hand it over thank you are, are you at home corbin that you can show I'm anything not, I'm, at, I'm at my second job <laughs> okay all right so no toys from corbin today just uh, just a little just my little car that's a police car okay does that does that help you with your chair mobility no oh, okay so you can't pull your chair or anything no um, you know yeah. One, one thing I know that um, I, I know for a fact, Andrew has been in one, Corbin's been in one, I've been in one, I'm betting Dominic's been in one, and I know Gary's been in one, and that's a basketball wheelchair, a wheelchair basketball, uh, basketball wheelchair is what it is. Oh, yeah. I've and, been in one as well. That's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a good time, and uh, they are designed a little different um i i have a couple pictures that i can show Go ahead. Um, or i have a picture at least and then um i'll let someone else talk about it though um so that's that's basically what a basketball wheelchair looks like they come in different heights um but basically you have five wheels on the ground there's there's two small wheels on the frame and then one in the very back and then your two big wheels and then you have those straps and they strap you down and I'm going to tell you right now, um, if you don't got very good balance and you try to use one of these, um, it's like, it's like grease lightning. I mean, those things are, they, they, the maneuverability on these things are just amazing. It, when I go from a, when I go from one of these chairs back to my everyday chair, it feels like I'm pushing a brick. Um, that's how well these move, but they're only designed to go on flat surfaces. They're not designed to go over bumps. They're not designed to go over any. In fact, if you try to go over a little bump, you could get hang hung up just on a teeny tiny. Oh, bump. Really easy to get. Yeah, the small yeah. caster wheels on them, and there's there's not a lot of tilt back and forth. You know, for like going into a wheelie and stuff. And, yeah. and so this would be. So these are chairs that would be specific to a sport. So if there was something that you wanted to to play, whether it's basketball or tennis or yep. um, rugby or whatever it may be, um, there is, there's some kind of an, adap an adapted chair or device to use with that um, for that particular sport, including things like sled hockey or uh, uh, yeah, sled hockey and um, uh, track and field. There's racing chairs for um, sprinting chairs for doing uh, for track and field for for marathon um, short distance as well as long distance rolling. Um, there are, there's chairs virtually for any kind of sport that you can think of um, in, um, it, it, for someone who is in a chair. 
and you can see here the guys in sled hockey. If you um, if you ever get a chance to see, hopefully it comes back next year, the Olympics. Um, certainly watch the Paralympics. The the um, the sled hockey is one of my favorite sports to watch. Uh, I think it, it's just it's so exciting to watch someone as they're just flying across the ice um, after puck and and just you know killing each other out there just like you'd see in hockey. So it's Brian, really I think it's really exciting to watch. Question for you, Brian. Um, do yes. we not have a hockey Olympian in the house? I think we do. I, I think we have at least, yeah, there is one. He has, he's been very quiet. Like a gold medalist, I believe. Yeah. No gold, no gold medal. No? No. Yeah. Corbin has been to the Olympics, my friend, many, multiple times. I, I think you have two. Uh, once. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're tied. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Corbin was, he, you were in hockey, you were in hockey quite a bit, weren't you? I was, I was on the first sled hockey team to go to the Paralympics, 1998, Nagano, Japan. And, uh, I actually helped start the, uh, Phoenix Coyote sled hockey team here. Are you still active with them? I am not at all. Okay. Nope. But it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. That is so cool. It's kind of fun that, uh, like at the last Paralympics, uh, the gold medal uh, probably 90 percent of those guys that were that were skating and got that gold medal i actually taught them how to skate wow <laughs> that's cool too i, I was actually cool. there there when they were coming to their first sled hockey camps and learning learning how to play you know that's a certification with coaching too i think one of the one of the deals is as a coach you can go to the you you qualify for the highest level coach because you have sent someone to the Olympics. Those kids have gone to the Olympics because of your coaching. Right. Yeah, and I, I, have, uh, I have that certification uh, in hockey and track and field because um, I've, I've coached cool. um, world records and, and uh, gold medalists and, uh, in track and field and hockey and everything. So it's a lot of fun. I've been around the world with uh, about six or seven different sports, either playing or coaching. Yeah, and that comes back to the travel things that we talked about the last time. So getting out and about, and and so it's not just you know right now we're kind of stuck with not really getting out and about too much, but um, you know certainly as things change and open up, is is go back to you know going back to travel and getting out and about and getting out of your house and um, getting out and doing things that you want to do, whether it is you know, some kind of sport or just even, you know, going for a bike ride. And it, so for you guys that are here in Phoenix, um, over at the Ability360 Center, um, they do have, um, they do have uh, road bikes over there that they, that I, I know that typically they have, they do classes on them. Can you talk about that at all, Karen? Do you know what, what has gone on there in the past or anybody know? Gary? I know they have the terrain hoppers. Now that's one of the new things that they have it was that um, a lot of fun is what it is <laughs> oh, oh okay michelle sounds like she's done it okay i know so it's on my us. facebook if it's on my facebook page i would have grabbed the video if, if i know they are um, fun so Oops. karen's going to show us something what are you going to show us here karen the terrain hopper if i can get oh, it okay show us a terrain hopper here if i can get it the right oh side. yeah those are cool yeah yeah, I've ridden in one of those. Those are a blast. Hopefully, we'll be able to get a couple when we do our Wheeling in Nature in October. Okay. So people can ride them. Bring them back down to Tucson, then. That was, that was a good day. That was a heck of a fun. Yeah. I, yeah, that's those. Okay. Were you able to bring up um, Sarah's video? Yes, I found it. Okay, can you play that? Oh, there's Sarah. Strange man just walked in my house. Uh oh. Well, kick. Uh, do we need to do anything? Um. Yeah. Well, you know. Okay. Okay, Sarah, I'm going to share your video that you did. Oh. Hello. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Can you turn up the volume at all? Um, no, that's as loud as it goes. Okay. I got it. 
from South Wales, right? Also, why um, they did an awesome job in South Wales. So, um, I think that was the Nice job, Sarah. <laughs> so I, well, so you I know what? I got in a couple. I rolled over glass outside, and guess what happened? A while back. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guess what happened when I rolled over glass? You got a puncture in your tire. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so I have uh, two questions from the video. So the the okay. um, the tire the tire spoons that you showed is is that kind of what Dominic was showing earlier today that you use is it similar to that oh they're well, right there oh, yeah they're similar them. to that I okay. got these off of Amazon and then the other question is that little compressor let me see that what the compressor. Yep. The air compressor? Can you show that? Is that handy? Can you show it? Can you show it? Yeah. So you got that off of Amazon too? Yes, I did, and it's rechargeable. So what's it called? It is called O-A-S-S-E-R. 
That's pretty cool. Time. I've never seen anything like that before. Anybody else seen that before? Oh. Yeah. Brian, I just got one um, off Amazon also, and you can you can program the, the PSI and then just – Yeah, um, that's what I do. And then you can – you just start it, and it stops at, at 110 PSI. Nice. Or whatever you want, whatever your tire pressure is set yeah. at. Yeah. And the that's one that I got is yeah. – the one that I got is a lithium-ion battery, so it weighs about like maybe a pound – and uh, and uh -huh. it, it's pretty sweet. Super. Sweet. I mean, it looks like it's so much, if you wanted to, you could throw it in a suitcase and travel. Oh, easily. Yeah. Yeah. The the hose actually unscrews, and there's a little um another little hole that it stores in, and it oh, nice. a little carrying bag. I'll I'll send you a link to it. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, I only the, have a manual fire pump too. And that's great if you're, you know, want to you know, work on your aerobic, act, you know, some yeah. aerobic exercise, right? So which do you like better, Sarah? The the new fancy electric one or your hand pump? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could you, could you put up the link? Yeah. Could you put up the link to both, please? Oh, send them to me and I'll, if you guys can send me the links to it, I'll send it out to everybody. Thank okay, you. I'll do that. I'll do that. Cool. I don't know how to do it on the yeah. phone. Because that's, that's I looked the... for a compressor forever and they keep breaking. And then finally I went to Home Depot and got one of them big pancake ones and now I'm good. But I can't obviously carry that with me. Oh. Yeah, that's hard to kind of travel with. I mean, that's yeah. the cool thing yeah. about that one is you could travel with that, throw that in your suitcase. And that way, if you're, you know, you're, if you happen to be out somewhere, you can patch a tire and, and still be able to inflate it. That, that's kind of cool. I, I did send a link for, I did a search and there's a bunch of them on Amazon and there's, I would just look through them, but there's like portable ones, just like Corbin was saying, you know, where you could program it and stuff. So cool. yeah, and we can't some of them look, they look like this big. I mean, they don't look very big at all. So. Yeah. They don't look like that. That didn't look very big and it looked like it was really light. And as I think as um, Corbin was saying like that it was, Oh, you're sharing your screen. Like what? I was oh. like, what happened to my computer? Oh yeah, there's all like, kinds of them. All right. Um, so uh, there are things also that you can add on to your. You know, um, um, Eric showed the the free wheel. Um, there's also another device called uh, that you can put onto a chair that is power assist for your wheel, for your, your chair. So you can have actual power wheels or a power assist device. So like eMotion makes something, um, there's another company called um, Smart Drive that makes a device that actually hangs on the back of the chair and provides um, propulsion for the for your manual chair. Um, and, and that allows you to, to free up your hands also to not be doing this all day long, pushing your, you know, pushing your chair. Um, I have, now I don't have a video of a person, so I'm going to, so this is the first time I'm sharing my screen here. Let's see if I can do this. Um, and then I want to show. And then I'll show you the Firefly and then my crate set up. Okay, cool. Now I'm trying to figure out. I was just looking for that Firefly. Well, you remember I have that because I asked you about it a while back and I got it. Yeah, you know, the TBI okay. thing, I forgot. Can, can, everybody <laughs> see, can everyone see my screen of a young lady? No, nope. we see Karen. You see I see you. No. So you don't see a young lady sitting in a wheelchair? Uh-uh. No, we no, just see I don't. People. You shouldn't see my screen. Well, you were talking oh, at the time. There you go, go there guys. Okay. Oh, okay. How about now? Yeah. Yeah, it's starting. Okay. So there she has a smart drive sitting in the back of her chair. What, what, what I'm going to show you is how she's using her smart drive, but she's also using this little um, dolly here to, to actually take out the trash, but you could use it for anything here. So. Oh, that's ingenious. Wow. You're really going to like my crate then. <clears throat> so
So she controls the smart drive with the, the push tracker, which looks like the wristwatch on her hand here. You can see her tap the wheel there. And now all she's doing is just having to steer the chair, but she's using the, the doll place so she can take out the trash here, which is kind of cool. So you could put mo mo wow. virtually anything into the into that dolly there. Um, she could have, you know, if you're if you're doing gardening, you guys can hear me, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if you're doing gardening or something, you put gardening tools into it or whatever. And so she's just using that little motor that's on the back of the chair here. That's what's propelling her chair. And that's it. That's really cool. That's so that was pretty cool too. It was a cool little video. Yeah. Um, let's see here. So to unshare. Gotta figure out. How to do I haven't seen a smart drive before. That's pretty neat. Okay. Back. Okay. So how do I unshare, folks? Press the the share button again. Well, I don't even have it coming back to my full screen. Up at the very top, Brian. What's that? Up at the very it's top of the screen. I think it's in red. It'll say you are viewing Brian's screen right next to the action key exit. If I press share, Karen, will I knock him off? Also, you, you may want to uh, move your mouse up to the top. That'll that'll have it come down. Yeah, it, it like brought you guys into this little tiny <laughs> this little tiny box here that I can't see. Okay. Yeah, it's a big boy. Oh, boy. It's like my computer just sort of. You have to open the Zoom window back up so you can see it. Yeah, and all I have is just this little strip here. I, it doesn't seem to let me do that. You can't maximize the strip? Not at the top. Oh. It's not giving me the choice to do that. Let me, let, me try to, let me try to share screen. Maybe it'll knock you off. Okay, try that. We'll stop others. Okay, yeah, I knocked you off, I think. Nope, it's still there. Yeah, now yeah, it knocked right. them off. There we hey, go. Ryan, hit the escape right. key on your keyboard and then Matt will do it. Oh, I didn't think about that. Okay. Oh, All right, there you go. Oh, there's a firefly. Wow. Is there a song talk about what's going on here, Michelle? So if everyone knows. All right, so this is the fire for that was me connecting it and dis um and then I'll go ahead and disconnect it. So again, it's an add-on power device for a manual wheelchair. And that's how I run my dog every <laughs> night. That thing hauls butt. Oh, they're fast. Yeah. It, yeah, it goes um, at some point, it, depending what terrain I'm on, I can go up about 14 miles per hour. And they have a version that goes, that I've seen that goes up to 20. And that's just incredibly wicked fast. Well, supposedly there's a guy that has one that do the mechanism to um, make it go faster. So just so you can get an idea of the difference in the speed, this is my dog pulling me instead of the firefly. Yes, I have fun when I do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fun. All right. And then this, this is the crate that I made to go shopping. Oh, it's on wheels. Yep. Nice. I made it. Oh, cool. Oh, that's clever. Wow. Like I said, though, it makes a lot of noise. <laughs> so it's just got little rolling casters underneath it so that it can, yeah. you can roll whatever direction you want to. Oh, yep. nice. That's wow. cool. Yeah. Well, that's pretty clever. That is cool. And even those things in the back of my chair so I can hang things because my chair doesn't have anything to hang anything on. So I just put those little turny things, the same thing that I have on the crate. And see, on and off real quick. I like everything quick. I'm from New York. The end. Can you push it in over? That's and pretty off. slick. How long have you had the firefly? <clears throat> um, not even a year, I don't think. Have you found that it was really it? wears down your tires? Um, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm concerned about. That is it gonna um kind of kind of go through your everyday tires accelerated. 
Um, probably. Okay, now I'm, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Okay, here we go. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. How did you do it? Okay. How much was it? Um, I think um, either two or three grand, something like that. I think Have I saw it on Amazon. Have you seen any other adaptive equipment, like the Firefly, that has longer handlebars or anything? Like yeah, that? that that was the biggest problem. Because I have an icon, it, it, it actually sits better on a regular chair, but because I have an icon, it was really hard to set up because we don't we don't have the, the roll bars from the top of the seat pan. It starts way down, so I had to connect it way low, so it's more like a, uh, like a chopper motorcycle. And the wheel, if you don't put weight in the front, which I don't, the wheel skids out all the time. So, but I got used to it and I really don't care because obviously, you know, I don't care if my chair tips either. I almost went over three times the other day doing that little lip in my garage. <laughs> and so, I know because I don't, I really honestly don't care. And so it's just how I am. And I, I saved myself. I didn't fall. Good. But um, you can put weights in the front. Even the guy that sells them, Andrew says just to put weights in the front. But they also have like the Bitech and other ones that are similar. And they don't have that issue, but they're also a heck of a lot more money. Yeah, there's all kinds of adaptations out there for, for power assist on chairs. You know, the, the, the thing about a lot of them is just looking at how it's going to work in your particular world. Like, right. like a Firefly is obviously not something you can really use inside. It's not, it, it's not designed to use like in your well, house. I, I've it's, tried it in stores, just so you know, I've tried it in stores, but yeah, the profile is a little big. I also have, I also took the crate and made a sidecar. So when I have the Firefly on, I can make it as a sidecar and I can put my other dog in. And actually in Halloween, I put the skeleton dog in the sidecar and that's how we rode around on Halloween. So it has other purposes. You can shop with it, but you need to be with somebody to open doors and stuff for you because it's just like a scooter. You can't open doors once you're in a scooter. Right. Yeah. You know, and that's so, a good that's a good analogy to a scooter is because yeah. it makes your chair about that kind of wheelbase, really super right. long. And you can't you can't grab a door. Yeah. Right. You can't grab a door. You can't do anything. So anything you can do in a scooter, you can do with a Firefly. I've yeah. tried it in stores. I've tried to do hickey different things, put bags and so on and so forth, and it's not really great. So. But I, I've thanks, done some other fun things. That, Michelle. No problem. But the crate to me is the bomb diggity. Now, if I can get it to be silent, that would be even better. Yeah, so, you're, so you can sneak up on people then? Yeah, I use that crate all the time. I can't go shopping without it. Yeah, that's a pretty cool idea. Um, any, anybody else have anything they want to share? No, but I want to know if the Firefly will go 14 to 20 miles an hour. Can I get my chair souped up so I can go that fast? I think uh -huh. you can. <laughs> Ask that guy that you told me to ask about the Firefly. He's got his, and he said, don't tell Andrew. But he, it, it's a little bike thing that's on the Firefly. So anyone that knows how to do the doohickeys on that bike thing, you can actually override the speed. He has his going 20 miles an hour. And I tried to do it, and I screwed up all, of course I did. But I, <laughs> I screwed up all of the things that it's supposed to be, and hopefully I got it back to where it belongs. But, yeah, you can override it if you know how. And it won't work on your power chair, Karen. Oh, dang. You yeah, but you can scoop up your power chair. You have to get a manual chair to use it. Yeah. We'll, right. get you some, we'll, we'll get you some nitrous and we'll soup up your power chair. No <laughs> there you go. We'll put some nitrous on your power chair. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, if, if, um, if nobody has anything else left to share, I think uh, we did a good job on going through a lot of stuff here today. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions of anything that we've covered in here over the past four times? I would just like at some point if we can actually have a wheelchair. I know Karen said I think we're having it to do a wheelchair clinic with just fixing. So how to know if, you, if your frame is out of alignment, how to know if your frame is bent, how to do all the things we've done today, but actually sit on the floor and do them. Yeah, and, and, and certainly when we have done this, you know, we do this live, it's a lot easier to show some of this stuff when it is live. So, yes, I mean, we've actually, you know, I usually what I do is I'll just pull somebody's chair and, and I'll just use that for our demo and say, okay, here's what you look for. Here's the kind of things that we do. Um, so today we kind of had to do a little abridged version of that. But when we can get together, hopefully in the fall, and um, and we can be face to face. Then you'll kind of see a little bit more with the uh, with the wheelchair setup stuff, and also the same thing with 
with having some of the other toys present so you can kind of see things yeah. like the free wheel, the smart drive, the, uh, the, the bikes that, that Dominic showed. So having those things, in, you know, when you can actually see them, put your hands on it's a lot different than just oh, seeing it. A video. lot easier. Now the, yeah. clinic, the um, clinic thing that we're doing next month with you guys, what do you guys remember about the same thing that we did today? Yeah. Right. What are you, who are you talking to, Karen? You, Brian. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we're yeah. actually, that's right. So, um, so you're going to be getting, are, are you emailing that? How you, how you, how are you connecting to everybody, Karen? Um, it'll be in our newsletter and social media. So on, on June, you're going to, you'll get an email from it probably. And you're going to get, um, it'll be on the, uh, the, uh, newsletter, but we're doing a, uh, a, a webinar just like this, um, on, on chair repair, cleaning, keeping things moving in your chair. So it'll be in this, oh, this same kind of format. But we've got some, actually some better, more high quality professional videos that we're going to be showing and better pictures and things. So, so look for the, look for the newsletter from the Spinal Cord Injury Association and it's on June. Do you know what it is? Uh, I, don't, I don't have my calendar in here with me. I know it's in, it's lit, latter part of June. I think it's like the, I want to say it's the, the, the third week or the, or the last week in June. I don't have my calendar right in front of me that I can pull it up easily. Either like the 18th or the 25th, I think. Yeah, that, might, that actually does sound vaguely familiar. Let's look at the 18th. Uh, no. 25th, <laughs> the 25th. Uh, no. It's the 11th. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty, it's on a Thursday. Let me go grab it. Oh, here we go. The 11th at 2 o'clock. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So 2 o'clock. So look for that. And um, um, we're going to be, uh, myself and um, one of the educators from that, that I work with, um, Catherine, she's going to be here presenting with me. So we're going to talk about a whole bunch of things in, in um, going over um, some, we're going to go over some wheelchair setup, a lot of things about cleaning and setup cushions and, and just how to keep stuff clean you know, in this day and age of, you know, trying to keep yourself as clean as you as possible. So, um, so that's in that's in a few weeks in the, down the road here. So look for that in the in the the newsletter, and it'll have the date and time and, and a way to sign up for it, just like you did for tonight. The newsletter is the thing we get through email, right? Yeah. Do you get our newsletter? I think so. Okay. If not, then go to our website, azfinal.org, and sign up for it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I get it, though. Okay. Well, if you don't, go to the website, and you can sign up for it on there, I believe, also, Karen, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, then, um, everybody, thank you very much for attending and yeah, for showing some great that. stuff, and, and, and thank you for your enthusiasm for this uh, this unique way that we've had to do our, um, our program this time around. Um, looks like there's some race cars in the background. That must be Corbin at work there. Um, sure. Hey, well, since I don't come into Phoenix, this worked out really well for me. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to drive to Phoenix. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So everyone, um, have a great evening um, and be safe out there. Thank you all very much. All right. Bye. Thank you.